What's up, everybody? Welcome to another in transit edition of Morning Scone. Matt, Drew, say what's up, Drew. Say hi. It is Dad Show. Hope y'all having a good day so far. We are headed back to the doctor. Story of our lives. So Drew, as y'all know, if you've watched, has had this um, persistent little uh, cough and hack and all that stuff. Just the, the gunk, it's a sinus infection. So um, <clears throat> going back to checking with the pediatrician. We are uh, scheduled for surgery in Houston on Friday the 18th, so two weeks from tomorrow, Drew will have uh, heart surgery, and so they're just making sure that uh, normally their protocol is if, uh, is if you're sick or you need an antibiotic that would push surgery uh, four to six weeks. So that would be really bad, though. Uh, and so Drew's docs were looking at, uh, initially they were going to postpone him four to six weeks, but um, kind of looking at all of his images and everything, they're like, yeah, probably shouldn't wait four to six weeks. So we got two weeks to make sure we get him as healthy as a horse and uh, get him ready to go over to Houston. So hope you all having a good morning so far do some good mornings here. I'm trying to be as careful as I can. Of course, Everett, good morning. Trivia, good morning. Dad, good morning. James Tyrone, Tyler, Chris Keller, good morning. Hey, Coach Ken, good morning. J uh, Justin Hutchinson, good morning. Uh, Matt Lusto, Rob Hayes. What's up, Rob Hayes? Good to see you this morning. Charlie Cavell, good morning, everybody. It's kind of a weird day, man, waking <laughs> up. And... What's up back there, bruh? Weird day, no football, no college football anyway. We got one game left, of course, the national championship game. With Clemson and Alabama. Um, hope y'all got your morning scone daily email. Actually, two really good things that I came across and I'm putting together the email for today. Uh, and if you don't subscribe to your that's probably too hot in here. If you don't subscribe to the morning scone daily email, you really should. It's um it's just really good content, man. Your email drop in your inbox every day at 6 a.m. and it's just links of stuff that I come across all during the day doing show prep and everything and uh, and it, it based on what you interact with like what you click on and what you like to read it learns how to prioritize stories for you so maybe let's say there's 10 stories in the feed but I might have like 30 ingested into the feed well it'll pick the ones that, that you want based on what you uh, you know what you interact with typically um, thank you Charlie hey, and Sharon good morning uh, Tim Witten, Clayton Wolf, good morning. Kirk, Sam Dixon, good morning. Chris Merrill, Scott Sanders. What's up, Scott Sanders? The Sandy Man is watching. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Dirk, what's up, man? Stephen Foyle, good morning. Um, after the game, did Drew tell UCF to kick rocks? Probably should have. Tell you what, man. I, I took, uh, you know, I, of course, I always, I mean, I always want to see LSU win. But I, I took an unnatural amount of joy in seeing UCF lose in the Fiesta Bowl. I don't know if that's uh, right or, or wrong or good or bad. And may, maybe it was because, like, I just, I, well, no, I know what it is. I know what it is. It's, it's the UCF people that were, like, pounding their chest. It's like, God, dog, man, you're out here playing ECU and SMU and UConn and South Carolina State and Temple and South Florida. I mean, that's your schedule. You're trying to tell me that you're at national. Like, you should be in the playoff, bro. You smoking rope? Give up 700 yards to Temple, bro. I mean, God, those those UCF people flooded my face, and they're delusional, man. They're delusional. Like tweeting me pictures of idiots wearing championship belts, like wrestling belt, national championship belts. I'm like, you realize the rest of the world is laughing at you for that. Anyway, so you set me off again, man. So we've learned what sets me off. Don't talk to me about LSU's wide receivers. Don't talk to me about referees. And don't talk to me about UCF being a champion. Clown shows. Anyway. Hey, Drew. Where did we go yesterday? What? Uh, Depot. Went to Home Depot for about 10 seconds. And he was like, eh, I'll buy some. I was like, 
like, okay. So we went and got a mop head at Home Depot and then went to Albertsons. My evenings. So what y'all doing? Uh, North of America. There you go. Kurt and Dakota. It's just kind of dark today. Uh, let's see. Very kind, Dan. Thank you. Hey, Damon Rando. Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Lauren Anderson. What's up? Um, Jerry Spurgeon. Good morning. Craig Savoy. Good morning. Sorry, this is a little shaky. We're going to... Um, Uh, Charlie said something about UCF was like because of the class and actions of their players. Yeah, but even before then, I mean, but you could tell that at the start of that game they were chippy, man, when they blew up Burrow and some of the personal fouls and fighting with Terrence Alexander and pointing it. I mean, they just UCF felt like they had something to prove in that game. I mean, they did. You know, they they not felt like they did have something to prove in that game, but they just didn't get their message across. Um. Um, wild card weekend for the NFL is this weekend. Um, this is going to sound weird, admittedly. I'm kind of bummed the Saints aren't playing. Obviously, I don't want them to play. I want them to have the bye and have home and for home field. And all. I just, I'm anxious. Let me put it this way: I'm anxious for the divisional round to get here. Um, curious. Who, so remember, the Saints will play the lowest remaining seed after the wild card round. So. They can't play the Bears, so the Bears will have a home game in the divisional round. And so that means they'll either play the Cowboys, the uh, Seahawks, or the Eagles. Um, so they'll play the Cowboys, Seahawks, or Eagles in, uh, in the divisional round. So you're probably looking at a Bears-Rams matchup in the division round, and Saints, and who would be the uh, who would be the highest remaining seed? Um, it's Bears, right? No, so you get Bears-Rams in the division round. You okay, bud? And then that's provided the Bears win. I think the Bears. How y'all feel about these matchups this weekend, man? I'm the Bears are like a five and a half point favorite over the Eagles, which is a little surprising. I guess I get it. It's Soldier Field. It's outdoors. It's playoffs. Um, man, it's like the Eagles just got some mojo with um, with Nick Foles that they don't have with Wentz. As good as they were last year with Wentz and a top well, I mean, had points this year. We got blown out in the dome. You okay, bud? And then I I guess I'd go Bears. I mean, I I guess I'd go Bears. And then I, I'll be curious to see how that matchup goes with the Bears in LA as opposed to you know the Rams having to go to the Bears like they did on Sunday night earlier this year in the cold. I mean that's that was the, the death knell for the Rams that they had to avoid, and that's honestly what the Saints had to avoid as well. It's possible playing a cold weather road playoff game like you know Chicago or Seattle. Um, <coughs> Dallas and Seattle will be interesting, and quite honestly, I think the Saints are going to get the winner of that game because I think the Bears are going to beat the Eagles, and so I think the Saints are going to end up getting the winner of Dallas and, and Seattle. And I think it's going to be Dallas, man. I, I think Seattle is a... Um, they're playing well of late, um, but Dallas's defense at home, I get the whole Jason Garrett, Cowboys choking the playoffs thing, and, you know, Dak hasn't won anything of significance. I do get that, but, man, I, I like Dallas's defense. I like them playing at home, too, man. If that game were in Seattle, that's a no-brainer, but... Um, I think the Saints are going to end up playing Dallas, just kind of as I talk through it. All right, we're at a red light. We'll get to y'all. Let's see. Uh, Garrett Gomez, good morning. Julie Roussel, good morning. Tim Witten, you're fine. Good morning. Brandon Paul, Chris Keller, no Fresh Market. Um, he went to Fresh Market on... No, he went yesterday morning with, with Erica. Stephen Miller, what's up? Brandon Paul, what's up? Carla Cat. 
Uh, let's see, Andre Chapoy, one of my favorite moments was Coach O helping the cameraman. I guess I was in the beginning. Mark uh, Vitanovich, Mark Demelin, good morning. Larry May, good morning. Alvin Gentry got blown out last night. He did not get blown out. They lost by like five. It was like 126 to 121. But still, it was it was Brooklyn. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tim Whitten, who's coming to the Dome next weekend. Yeah, I just kind of went through that. I think um, I think it's going to be Dallas. If, if you made me put my money, I think it's Dallas. Craig Schilling, Nathan DeMoss. What's up, y'all? Jeffrey Bone, David Barrett, good morning. Tyler, Patrick Hales, Ronnie Duga. Brandon Paul, the Eagles and Seahawks have momentum going for them right now. True, but I like the home teams, man. I do. Yeah, I... Yeah, give me the, give me the home teams in these games. I'll be very curious to see if if Chicago can go to LA and win. Um, again, if the game were in Chicago, I'd I'd like the Bears. But uh, you know, the other thing too, man, is eventually one of them young quarterbacks is gonna have to win a game. You know, they're gonna have to win a playoff game. It's you know for for all the talk about the Bears too. It's similar to to last year with the Rams. And I don't know, I've said this before, but. You know, Atlanta had no reason, they had no business going to L.A. last year and winning that game. And you just had a veteran playoff team that was calm in that moment, knew how to win, had been in the Super Bowl a year before against a second-year quarterback and a first-year head coach, their first playoff experience. And Atlanta dominated that game, man, against the Rams. There's something to be said for that. And, and maybe... Like, maybe that happens this weekend with Philly and Chicago. Like, maybe Nick Foles and Doug Peterson and that whole crew from, from Philly just goes up to Chicago and, and does in Mitchell Trubisky and, you know, and, and Nagy. And it's just a couple guys, coach and quarterback, and our first playoff experience. And even though they're at home, maybe they just gag. I mean, we saw it last year with Philly, even though they were a really good team. Um Maybe it's just maybe for me, it's just like having seen the Saints lose to Lovey Smith and Rex Grossman at Soldier Field. Maybe it's just that like it's literally just that, knowing how hard it is to go to Soldier Field and win this time of year. So sorry, y'all trying to pay attention here, so don't we're over here by by the uh, all the medical complexes by Essen going going to bring Drew over to the Baton Rouge Clinic. I just don't want to hit anybody on a crosswalk, you know what I mean? Hi. What? Are you counting? Hey, Drew, can you count to ten? One, two, three, four, five. Quack, quack, quack. Did you say quack, quack, quack? The Drew on the bus says... We actually never say what the drill on the bus does. The wheels on the bus go round and round. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep. Very good, Drew. Beep, beep, beep. Um, uh, when does LSU play Arkansas in, I guess it's B-ball. Uh, it's the second conference game, Kirk. So they play... Alabama on Tuesday, I believe, and then they play at Arkansas next weekend. Um, boy, and check like check out their check out LSU's basketball schedule if you haven't done it yet. I know people are psyched about, but it's funny, man. I had so many people yesterday being like, "All right, football's over. It's ba LSU baseball time." Like, whoa, ho, 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 hang on. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's basketball season first, man. We have got another uh, we got another month before we get into, into baseball. Um, but honestly, this month, like this month of basketball, will tell you whether or not they're going to be relevant in in uh, in February and March because they start off their first half of the conference schedule, the first eight games. The toughest game is going to be at Bud Walton, and if they can win that one, they got a great chance to start eight and zero or seven and one um, in conference play. <laughs> They have a pretty brutal three-game stretch with Kentucky and Auburn and Florida. Um, and then 
it's manageable after that, but you will know everything you need to know about this LSU basketball team uh, through the first eight games of SEC play because literally the one in Arkansas might be the only game they're not favored at. And what's funny is like they got to go to Missouri as well. And, you know, Missouri, I would have kind of been worried about that game, but uh, Jonte Porter, Michael Porter's brother, who was like the sixth man of the year in the conference last year, he tore up his knee, so he's done for the year. Um, so that game is not really intimidating either. Okay, Drew, you ready? Who are we going to go see? Dr. B. Dr. B. Coco and? Dr. B. Dr. B. We're going to go see Coco is Courtney, and Dr. B is Dr. Broman. Uh, so, Courtney, out? You want to get out? Huh? What? Okay. All right. We're done. We're going to go. We're going to go see Coco and Dr. B. Y'all have an awesome day. Thanks for watching. As always, uh, we will do the um, uh, Locked on LSU Facebook Live probably around 11 this morning. So if y'all are around 11 o'clock, check for a Facebook Live post. We'll do a live Q&A for the Locked on podcast. Thanks. And y'all have an awesome, awesome day. Later.